Transformers released back in 2003 for the PlayStation 2 is actually based on the show Transformers Armada, which I've never seen. I'm more of a G1 guy, but hell, Transformers is Transformers to me. Plus, I heard decent things about this game, so I wanted to see just how good or bad it is. Right off the bat, hitting the home run has got to be the graphics. Good lord, this game looks drop dead gorgeous. It has to be one of the best looking PS2 titles. In fact, I say it has to be one of the best looking games of the 6th generation of consoles. Lighting, texture, shading, it's all on point. The environments are lush, vivid with striking colours to bring the game to life. Now, I'm not saying this game is in Crisis League, but I have to admit, when I was on the Amazon levels, surrounded by all that vegetation, I couldn't help but think of my time playing Crisis. I guess the catch race for console owners back then should have been, yeah, but can it run Transformers? The draw distance for this game is insane, you can see for miles, which is a good thing because the maps are huge. All of this does come at a price though, and that price is a dip in frame rates. While it's not constantly happening, it does happen enough that you will notice it. This game after all at its heart is a third person action shooter, probably one of the worst types of games to get frame drops in. The game also has motion blur, which is something I can't personally stand, and usually turn off in games. However this game doesn't have that option. So with the graphics being so impressive, how does the gameplay stack up next to it? Well, it's a bit of a mixed bag really. The gist of the game will see you picking between three available Autobots, namely Prime, Hotshot and Red Alert. Each of these guys have their own attributes, so there are gameplay reasons for picking someone else, it's not just a model swap. Before you head out into a drop zone, you can customise your Autobot. When you go into these drop zones, you'll have to find Minicons. These give you special abilities or enhancements and new weapons. These Minicons are scattered all over the map, so you'll have to search every nook and cranny to find them all which depends if you're a completionist gamer or not. You can equip 4 minicons at one time, you can do that back at HQ or when you find them directly on the map. You'll probably end up messing about with them more in HQ as you set up your Autobots before you roll out to the next drop zone. You move around the map using wormholes scattered around in multiple locations in the same map. It's best you find as many of these as you can as they also act as save points alongside respawning points. Considering how vast the maps are you don't want to be started from the beginning each time. Plus, the game will require some backtracking now and again, so it just makes your life easier. You can shoot and possibly shoot some secondary weapon like missiles if you have the right minicon attached. Other buttons might be used to activate something like a shield. You can jump in this game also, but it's really bad, but I'll get to that later. For sure you want to keep an eye out for a jump minicon you find far too late in the game, but it makes a world of difference. Some minicon attachments are automatic in their nature as they will activate when the right situation occurs, like when you're using the glide for example. It's all about finding that right minicon setup so you can dish up some Autobot fury on the battlefield. You can also switch into FPS mode. You'll have all the same controls as before, this mode is used to sneak upon enemies as they can't hear you coming, which is utterly pointless as the minute you start shooting everyone gets alerted to your presence and you will soon get ganged upon. So I never really found myself using FPS mode that much really apart from when I was inside more enclosed environments. There's no lock on feature, so you're free to shoot as you please. It's better this way, as you'll need to see enemies coming from all around you, which is another reason to stay away from FPS mode. With this being a Transformers game, you bet your ass that you can transform. Pressing triangle will signal the iconic sound of you transforming. But here is the thing, I rarely found myself transforming. The game never really gives you a moment where you think transforming would be a good idea right now. I mostly did it when I reached a part of the map that was just that long and I needed to get somewhere quickly. Another time I might do it is when a bunch of Decepticons just annoy me that much that I wanted to repair the favour by running them over. The handling of when you transform is a bit iffy at times too, but that's more to do with the environments and bizarre physics modelling. Such a shame a game based on Transformers requires very little transforming. I found the enemy placements to be infuriating at times. Just so you could clear a jump you'd have to wipe out a bunch of enemies or making that jump would be nigh on impossible. One problem this game has for sure is the platforming parts. Even when there's an obvious jump right in front of you, it's like it has to be in the perfect spot that you jump in, or else it won't work. While the maps themselves look fantastic, the level design of them leaves much to be desired. One mistake could see you fall all the way down from a high area that took you long enough to get to. It's Mega Man levels of frustration, but at least in that game you straight up die when you miss time a jump. Here you were kept alive, just to suffer and look on above to where you have to painfully climb back to the game or just restart, which is what I ended up doing. It's these sort of moments that instantly killed any enjoyment I was having. Why they were included is a mystery, 
On top of the ludicrous gaming physique, which will see you flip-flopping all over the place like some ragdoll. I don't know about you, but when I think of Transformers, I don't think about air gliding through some tricky mountains. Maybe I'm doing Amada a disservice. As I said, I haven't watched that show. Maybe there's a lot of air gliding in there. Even so, it never felt like it was a good idea to put that into a game. The frustration doesn't end there, as sometimes you'll have to deal with going inside more closed off environments. It's so weird to go from wide open spaces to tight confined areas where everything feels too close. There's no room for you to manoeuvre. You can't get a good view of your local radius either, which sees you getting swarmed by enemies. Melee in this game is pretty much useless, as enemies can block, but I used it more during these phases of the game. Now that's not to say I didn't have fun on this game, I sure did. One of which was the awesome boss fights. I remember when this boss threw me clean off the top of the pyramid. I couldn't believe just how far he threw my auto butt off that place. I caught some serious airtime, But the battle didn't end there, he came straight down ready to finish me off. Again this was just showing off just how wonderful this game can be. This battle was intense from the get go, it got me fired up and having fun. Then there's the boss fight with Tidal Wave, which I can only describe as fighting a one man army. Literally this guy is huge. This is the excellent game engine flexing its muscles again. Tidal Wave is pretty much shooting at you from everywhere, dropping missiles, bombs, lasers, you name it. This is what it feels like to fight a titan. It was a truly epic fight. I love the little animations of when Tidal Wave will cover his face as you try your best to take pop shots at him, while you can. There are many other good boss fights, but I don't want to ruin the game. Rest assured you'll have fun with those. That's on the parts where I was out in the open without the mad terrain, platform levels, and the few parts inside which actually had space for you to breathe, is where I had the most fun. I just wanted more of that. That's where the game really hits home. The story is surprisingly vague. The Autobots and Decepticons come to Earth in search of Minicons, as they give extra powers to whoever combines with them. And that's pretty much it for the game story. There is a severe lack of voice acting. You get the odd cutscene at the end or beginning of a drop zone, but are really expecting more for a licensed game based on Transformers. You don't see any human characters in this game either, which is fine by me. I don't buy a game to see or play as humans when it's all about Transformers, but I thought they would be involved in the story, but nope. The first thing that hit me a few seconds after turning the game on was how good the music was. I mean that title menu music was something ominous like something I'd hear out of the film Aliens. From there on the music continues to be a stellar affair. I don't know if it's been taken from the show directly or if it was originally produced. Maybe a mix of the two. Certainly something I'd happily put on my MP3 player for listening outside of the game itself. It was that good. The boss music especially worked to treat at getting me pumped up and would make great gym music. The sound effects were also neat. You could hear every step for example but it would sound different, so when walking on snow it would truly sound just like it. The sound of your weapons and explosions are done really well. So is this game worth owning? Well that depends. For me yeah it's totally worth it. This is by no means a great game, but it's okay. As a Transformers fan it gave me that nostalgia trip and hit certain beats in my heartstrings, especially them boss fights. This game very much reminds me of games like Gun Metal and Slave Zero. Like those games, I wish this game had stuck to what it was good at doing rather than putting in annoying poorly designed platform parts. If you stripped off the IP of this game it would still be a decent game, but with the IP all over it then yeah I'd have to say this is a must own game for any Transformers fan, regardless of which Transformers you might have grown up with. If you're not a Transformers fan then you can probably give the game a skip as it's not got much to offer you as a third person shooter and you can certainly find better.